Hello, welcome to a sa Sunday lunchtime edition, late lunchtime, I've already eaten, edition of Mornings with Stanley. I had a, uh, a shocking experience at lunch. Went to a restaurant and they put their calories on their food. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. It was not pretty. <laughs> I just had a turkey club sandwich and it was 1100 calories. It's like, come on. So I should have eaten from the guiltless stuff <laughs> and maybe I will next time. I think I'm going to have to row for like two hours today to make up for it. And maybe take a walk or two. I'm not sure if we're going to get one because I really want a nap. And then it's, I don't know, the weather could be getting bad. I don't think we have a real high chance here. But the cold front is coming through. It's kind of muggy outside right now, 82 degrees. I'm ready for it to cool off a little bit, which it will at some point this afternoon. And I really don't want to be out in it, so I'll have to look and see what's happening. We had a pretty good service today. It was Mother's Day, so, you know, it's usually one of the largest attended Sundays. But... I think a lot of our mothers go <laughs> with their children. So we actually were down um, today. So anyway, that's okay. Or maybe those days are gone. You know, people just don't go to church anymore. So but we have a pretty good number. We saw that we have one new couple that has been there. This is their fourth Sunday in a row. That's good. And um Exciting to see that. And the other two couples over here last week were not here, but it's Mother's Day, so you just never know what's going on. And they haven't left their contact information, so they can't call, call them or anything. Anyway, it's a good Sunday. And I'm ready for a nap. I just rewrite, I write and rewrite my sermon all night long. <laughs> I just, I don't know, it's just the way my, my brain works. So, I don't sleep as well on Saturday nights as I do every other night. So I'm going to put this fella outside, or out of the room, and then I'll read our reading. You know, without the... But Christian maturity, Jones always had a scripture passage with with everything, and and this doesn't have that. So um, he talks about the scripture in it. He always references scripture, but um, but we don't actually read it before we do the the reading here. So that's taken a couple of minutes off of our, which might be a good thing. Some of my some of my videos are quite long. I can be long-winded. I'm somebody who I'm very quiet and shy, and I bet there are some people who think I never talk at all. And here I get on these videos, and I'm talking to a camera, my phone, and I'm talking and talking and talking. It's like, why do they ever talk like that in public? <laughs> What's wrong with them? Here's our reading for today, Sunday of week two. Graven on his hands? We saw last week that being in Christ is bigger than we supposed. Instead of being within the sphere of influence of a historical figure who faintly and indirectly operates on us as any other historical figure, perhaps a little more vividly and vitally, we are beginning to see that to be in him is to be an ultimate reality. To be in him is to have the roots of our being in reality. To be in him is to have the sum total of reality behind us, sustaining us and giving us cosmic backing. Isaiah 49, 16 says, Behold, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. We are not chalked on God's hand, nor painted on. We are graven. If we are chalked or painted on his hands, he could wash his hands of us. If we are graven on his hands, however, as a sculptor engraves a name in granite, we are literally on his hands forever. The name of Jesus is not chalked or painted on the facts of history or nature. It is graven, ineffably, 
graven into the nature of reality. As one writer puts it, the name of Jesus is not written on history, it is plowed into it. To be in Christ is to live life according to the grain of the universe, not against it. In the San Francisco airport is a sign. As you slide down the banister, banister of life, may all the splinters be turned the other way. <laughs> well, if you slide down the banister of life without Christ, then all the splinters are turned the wrong way. You get hurt. You cannot revolt against Christ without revolting against yourself. He who spits against the wind spits into his own face. We often think that the alternative is to be his or to be my own. If you are not his, however, you are not your own. If you lose life, you lose life. If you lose capital L life, you lose little l life. You are like a child who beats his head against the wall to punish his mother and finds it a losing game. To be in Christ is to be in life. To be out of Christ is to be out of life. Christ is life. All else is anti-life. Here's our prayer for today. O oh, Jesus Christ, I see that to choose you is to choose life. To refuse you is to refuse life. So I choose you, not with a portion of my being, with, but with all there is of me, now and forever. I am committed. Amen. And our affirmation for the day. If I want to live, this is the way. I can live some other way and get hurt. Jesus is Lord.